Hello and welcome back to Partimeter where today, inspired by the incredible Jack Pepin, we're going to be attempting his chicken ballotine. Now this may seem a little convoluted and it definitely is for the more skilled with the knife but this recipe actually calls for a whole chicken deboned in the classic French technique so you're going to need a super sharp knife. Start by making an incision along the length of the spine, this will help release the skin. Then making two diagonal slits at the top of the breasts, get your fingers in there and you have to feel around for the wishbone. You want to carefully remove it, trying to cause as little disturbance as possible to the breast. Now this is going to make the whole process of deboning and indeed carving a whole lot simpler. Then from the joint, you want to cut off the wing flats. So make a small cut to expose the cartilage and you just want to cut right through that. Once that's done, you'll see the bird is intact from the shoulder joint. So follow the tip of the wing and feel where the sort of joint is. Then put your knife in and jimmy it around until you actually find the joint. And remember it should be an easy cut to make. So if you are hitting bone, don't force your knife through it. Once that's disconnected, repeat the same process with the other shoulder. At this point, there aren't any anchoring points there. So turn the breast inside out and start peeling the chicken away from its carcass. Almost like taking your jumper off. Now what you want to do is undress the chicken until you see these parts. These are the oysters because here will be two more anchoring points, the hips. So what I like to do is put pressure on the thigh and pop the hip joint out of its socket. Then just cut around the tougher parts like the sinew and just make sure your knife doesn't slip through and cut the skin. Then just repeat the same thing on the other side and then you can pretty much just tear the rest of the bird off. Cut if you need to but just keep your incisions as close to the carcass as possible for minimal wastage. Then you're left with two parts, this beautiful skin with the meat still attached and a very very clean carcass. And just as an FYI, don't go telling normal people you can do this, it's a little scary. Anyway, on the carcass you'll see there are still two coveted pieces of poultry, the fillet or tenders. These you just remove using your thumbs, they're very very soft, so just press down and get your thumbs underneath them and just run it along the sternum. You'll see on the fillet there is some small white sinew. If you want, you can remove it by holding it down with a piece of paper towel and scraping your knife up against it. That will cleanly remove that bit and you won't have it annoyingly stuck in your teeth later on. Now you're left with this beauty, but it still has the leg and wing bones inside it. So first remove the wings by almost standing the wing up on the work surface and then carving around the cartilage. Now you want to hit bone. I like to shave around it so I don't lose as much meat. Once you do feel it, scrape along the bone all the way and then just grab a piece of paper towel and pull the bone out. Be sure to turn the wing inside out again. And again, repeat on the other side. You'll see the bone, there's absolutely no wastage on the bone. And just make sure you're keeping your knife nice and clean. Now we're gonna do the legs. This time we're not actually pulling the bone out. So start by scraping the thigh bone until you hit the leg joint and now use the same method of shaving around the joint leaving as little meat as possible not cutting into the cartilage but until you hit the leg bone again scrape on the bone until you hit the ankle at this point we want to put the bone back inside the leg at the ankle using the back side of your knife breaking the bone just above the ankle we want to keep the ankle intact so the skin has an anchoring point so when we do cook this thing the skin won't want to shrink back pull the bone out like a magic trick and of course repeat on the other side now seriously be impressed at what you've just achieved it's no ordinary feat but one last step on the chicken you'll see some gaps so place the fillet in those gaps and it'll fit in like a jigsaw puzzle it's so cool just make little butterfly incisions on the breast to cover up any bare skin. We want an even layer of chicken on this thing. And voila, that's it. That's the hard part done. Now here I have some shiitake, some white closed cup and this jumbo white mushroom. Use whatever selection you want. Go with wild mushrooms if you're feeling extra fancy. Start by removing the stems because we don't want any of those tough chewy textures in this incredible stuffing. What you want to do is finely chop them down like really finely. Just use a food processor. I realized this when I was in too deep. Save yourself. What we're going for is almost a mushroom puree. That way your kids won't be able to say ew would pull a face and pluck them out. Now just grab yourself a pan on a sort of medium high heat and go in with a splash of olive oil. Then add in one medium onion. I'm using this white onion but brown works too I guess. Start sweating that down before crushing in three cloves of garlic. And then just go in with a pad of butter which is going to help boost the flavors and bring a few extra nutty nuances. A small pinch of salt and pepper of course. Now it's very important that you only use a little bit of seasoning because we're going to add more later on. On. Adding it intelligently in these steps will help break down and sweat your ingredients faster. So go in with your mushrooms and again another layer of salt and pepper just to help release that moisture. Then go in with about a teaspoon of dry sage, about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and lastly again a teaspoon of dry parsley. Once that has visibly reduced down, time to go in with your spinach. So fill the pan up and it'll reduce into almost nothing. Again add a bit of seasoning with some salt and pepper and wait for them to wilt down. Have a drink while you wait and just give it a good mix through and your stuffing is pretty much ready. It's very, very simple. 
Now go and grab your chicken and season the meat down with some salt and pepper. Trust me, there's nothing worse than a bland stuffed chicken. Evenly layer on your stuffing. Don't go super heavy, but definitely don't scrimp. You'll see that there's a little pocket in the legs where the bones once were. Stuff that with your spinach too. Then I'm going to tear off thin layers of this amazing fresh mozzarella and I'm going to top it off with some sourdough croutons. These will soak up all of those amazing juices that would otherwise run out and turn into sort of delicious bombs of flavour. Now for the coup de gras. Reseal your zombie chicken and make sure none of the stuffing is left exposed. If you run out of skin to stretch you can always patch it up with a bit of aluminium foil. Flip the bird over and cross its legs like it's story time and then we're going to start the battle team. Grab yourself a roll of twine and make sure to double knot just above the ankles, securing both legs together. Make sure you leave a length of string in the knot. What you want to do now is create a loop, twist it backwards and then slide it down the chicken like so. Gently tug at the string to secure it down, not too tight so the stuffing will want to escape but just tight enough so the bird doesn't come undone. Repeat the loop de loop equally across the chicken. After that just cut off the string then loop it around these other bits of string further securing the bind. Then just double knot it with a bit of leftover string from the ankle knot when you get to the end. And now this beauty is ready for cooking. So grab a pan with some olive oil on a medium high heat and again go in with a pad of butter. Once the butter starts to foam we're going to gently place the chicken in with some salt and pepper so the skin gets caramelised and becomes crisp almost sealing that stuffing in there giving you some incredible colour and therefore obviously flavour as well. Flip the bird around and make sure you're getting that seal on all sides, giving it a bit of time for the fat to render down into the pan as well. And then just put it in the oven for about 40 minutes at 185 degrees celsius. And yes, you are left with a greasy pan, but let me tell you the flavours in there are unheard of. You can drain a bit of that out or just bring it all to one side as I did here. And what I'm going to do is thinly cut some slices of sourdough and then toast them in this chicken fat. So essentially making little umami croutons, perfectly complements the balatine. Then get these out once they're nice and golden crispy. Do this about 5 minutes before the chicken is out of the oven. Once the time is up, rest the chicken for about 5-10 to 10 minutes and then liberate it from its twine. Now for the all important cross section, I mean seriously the beauty speaks for itself, amazing flavours. Do me a favour and share this video, let's just spread the love that this will bring. Drop a like, comment and please take a look at my Patreon page, link down below. Happy cooking.